Well, it's up to you guys to decide whether you think these two things are alike or not. Um, make um, make sure to like and um, subscribe to the channel if you like the video. Um, they're comparing 45's campaign in 2020 to what Obama's was in 2012 when he was running for re-election. Um, it says, why would anyone vote to re-elect 45? The argument is that one's difficult to make and entirely straightforward. Certainly, his record in office, a tax cut no one in particular even asked for, a modestly improved version of NAFTA, which basically he um, basically he tried to pass NAFTA off as his own, but it was nothing more than a rewrite that Obama had passed, that has won some support from the organized labor, not invading Iran or overthrowing the Syrian government. A handful of economic statistics that were meaningful in January looks, looks thin in comparison with his rhetoric on the campaign trail for 2020. Perhaps his most significant achievement in office is the, sen is the sentencing reform bill passed at the behest of, um, of the dumbass Kanye West as one for which he is likely to receive no credit from partisans on either side. But one sometimes wonders what exactly 45 what 45's inbred supporters had expected from him. It is hard to imagine that anyone really thought he would single-handedly reverse the decline in manufacturing or save middle America from the opiate crisis. This is to say nothing. Of, this is to say nothing of China, a problem so large that even beginning to solve it would require something like the, the unanimous bipartisan consensus that existed during the Cold War. I think that in the case of a large number, certainly not all, but a great many of the squatters' fans, my utilitarian framing of the question gets things backwards. Voting for 45 in 2016 was not a kind of earnest money payment for services that su that supporters expected to see rendered at some point during the four years that he would have to serve. It was an existential decision. It was an ex existential decision, a kind of a less committal, um, a, a kind of a less fuck you gesture to the world. Though, uh, even though 45 was not a, was not being elected in order to do something, the fact of his being in office at all and what it represented to these um inbred voter the, the in, to these voters enemies, Wheeler perceived was somehow an, an affirmation of their lives. Which is why I think that if we are looking for framework in which to discuss the squatters' chances of re-election, a much better point of reference from 2016 is to go look back at 2012, when Barack Obama surprised many observers, including some in his own party, by holding on to his squad and seat to win a second term. Many of the things that 45 and 2020, many of the things 45 and 2020 and Obama did in 2012, have have in common or not unique. Like both of these men, Bill Clinton lost control of the House of Representatives two years into his squad and seat, but Bill, but Bill Clinton's response was to take up much of the new Repug-controlled House's agenda, signing the welfare reform, crime bills, and the Defense of Marriage Act into law. For this acquiescence, his reward would eventually lead to his impeachment, but not before being managed to, but not before he managed to, to hold on and win a second term. Meanwhile, after campaigning on hope and change and the, and the fundamental transformation of American life, Obama found himself the inheritor of two major wars and an economic crisis not, not of his own making but managed to pass a single major piece of non-emergency legislation, the Affordable Care Act, before his party lost the House in 2014. After this point, he, his, was, his was effectively a lame duck presidency, one in which the ordinary business of government gave away to an endless series of meta-complex over things like an extent to which cabinet officials are exempt from federal subpoenas, which, cul um, which culminated in shambolic hearings on Fast and Furious. Um, Benghazi and the IRS's treatment of conservative nonprofit groups. The only real achievements of the Obama era came either by way of executive un un um, unilateralism, DACA, or else were gift, gift wrapped from the Supreme Court. This is more or less likely the trajectory that 45 Squad and C has followed so far. After securing the tax bill that is the um, Trumpian equivalent of the Obamacare just before the Christmas recess in 2017, he has found his spondency defined by the use of executive orders and by pitch battles with the opposition party, which culminated in his House impeachment and eventual Senate acquittal earlier this year. Technically, he wasn't acquitted, so either way, he's still fucking guilty. Um, what does this mean for his chances of re-election? On paper, there was every indication in 2012 that Obama was a weak candidate. He had almost nothing to show for his term in office, um, least of all the Affordable Care Act, which was then mainly associated with the disastrous rollout of the online exchanges rather than with the pragmatic and universally popular expansion of Medicaid. There, are, there were questions, too, about why someone had campaigned so effectively against dumb wars had decided to invade Libya at the behest of his Secretary of State. Um, Obama's approval rating was a little bit higher than 45's, but not as much high, significantly higher than 45's as now. The hopeful rhetoric of his first campaign had given away to complaints about the cynicism of his opponents. Supporting Obama in 2008 had been a, a had been a to use a phrase much repeated at the time, a once in a lifetime chance to, to 
to affirm the intro value of hope and change and far more significant, the triumph of a half a century of progress in America race relations by electing our first black president with the same pitch work again. Well, we all know how things went down. Obama's turnout operations was once again successful, especially with minority voters. Instead, it was the opposition party that struggled to get voters to the poll on behalf of one of the be of the least inspiring major party pres uh, presidential nominees in recent American history. In 2012, it was not the incumbent um, president's record of success in office, but a combination of his personal appeal and of widespread indifference, not, a, not least among the party's activist base, toward the other candidate that allowed him to win re-election. Eight years later, 45 chances of a second term depend not upon his inbred supporters' assessment of his achievements, such as they are, but with the Democrats' enthusiasm for their own nominee. In November, we will learn just how similar 45 and Obama's presidencies are really alike, in which they're not.